Today we're going to be going over a video series on the problem of evil. Um, now this is taken from chapter 46 of my book, History of Religion and the Journey Towards Truth. This tends to be the biggest issue that non-believers have with the belief in a God. Okay, there, there's, there's, there's hundreds of problems, but this is the number one uh, problem that most non-believers have. And I want to start this video series off with a, with a quote that is very paradoxical in itself. Uh, what I want you to do is look over this quote. Um, you, can, and you can read this in my book in chapter 46. And try to come up with an answer. Try to come up with, um, you know, how this could be applied to a God belief. Um, and no matter which way you look at it, it kind of blocks it from happening. It's, again, it's very paradoxical. It was from a man named Epicurus in the 3rd century BCE. And this is what he says. Is God willing to prevent evil, but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able, but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? And this quote here, it's again, no matter how you look at it, and just so that way, I, I don't know if my listeners um, understand what these words mean, so I'll quickly explain it. Um, and I'm not trying to offend anybody if you know if you do understand it already, because this is meant to be for the laity. All right. Uh, the, the word omnipotent uh, means um, all knowing. Okay, or I'm sorry, all powerful. Um, it means all powerful. And um, so God is able to do anything by his power. Okay, he's, he's all powerful. Omniscient means all knowing. Okay, so it means God knows everything. And the Bible claims these. Uh, it's claimed in the Bible that God knows every hair on your head, how many, how many hairs you have on your head. That would be a definition of omniscient. Okay. Uh, the, the creation account, okay, um, it, God is omnipotent, he's the creator, he's all powerful, okay, so malevolent means um, evil, means sinister, okay, um, so it kind of gives you an understanding, uh, kind of like omnibalevolent means uh, uh, full of love, but look at that paradoxical quote and try to come up with a conclusion yourself, and I, I, I spent hours trying to wiggle my way through it no matter which way you look at it uh if he's omnipotent then then why can't god prevent evil okay well if you say well well you know uh god you know allows evil okay so it's not that he can't he can't he can he just he allows it okay because a couple ate some fruit but then if you then if i go well if he's able not willing then he'd be malevolent correct well, then if you go, if he's both able and willing, if he's able to do both, right? He's all powerful, all knowing, then whence cometh evil? If he's not able to do anything, then why call him God? So it's kind of paradoxical, but just, just kind of give you a food for thought. But this, this chapter here goes over all of the, the, the problems that we have. And, and, and this is what I call present day mentality. Um, and I talk about this a little bit in my book. And we, a believer's world is so small, you know, and I, I give a definition here at the beginning of my book that, you know, sometimes we get lost in the cruel world uh, when we are set up with a good family, you know, have a good job, have the luxury of kicking back our feet at night and watching the nightly news. You know, not, unfortunately, not everyone has these simple pleasures in life. We may indeed hear about evil acts done while watching our televisions and our climate controlled homes. But this is nothing in comparison to being actively involved in many of the atrocities that happen every day around our world. Everyday events occur on the globe that consist of murder, rape, child abuse, pedophilia, disease, violence, amongst many others. <clears throat> so, you know, this idea of evil is, <clears throat> again, is evidently true. We, we see these atrocities happen around the world. Uh, all around the world. Now, most Christians will will use the answer of, well, this occurred when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, 
which caused all the evil to go in the world. Well, first of all, understand a couple of things about this. And I go over this in a chapter called Adam uh, and many other areas within my book. This idea that evil came into the world because of a, a single man and a single woman ate a forbidden fruit from a magical tree that caused all the evil to come into the world both can be disproven in two different ways. First of all, when you study the human genome, there can never have been just two humans on the planet. Okay. The, the, the smallest number of humans that could ever have been would have been around 10,000 humans. And this actually, this event almost actually did occur. And that is about the smallest number you can get to. So there never was a once, there never was a time where you had one human man and one human woman, that was it. That's not how it works. Um, that's actually impossible as far as, as biology goes. That's not how it works. <clears throat> but we can disprove it that way, but also we can disprove it in another way. And that is through comparative mythology. This whole story of Adam and Eve, and I go over this in my book as well, Adam derived from many other character traits, especially in the, the Mesopotamia Empire. Let me give you a couple of short stories that, that, that I tell in my book as well. Um, first of all, the creation of man. Okay, God takes uh, from the dust of the ground, breathes into man the uh, breath of life in his nostrils, and he becomes a living, living soul. This is a golem spell. This was an ancient belief that you can take an inanimate object and your breath, any movement of wind was God. So you could breathe into this and it would become alive. So there's a story, uh, there's a couple stories here. Uh, you have Nua, which was an ancient uh, um, Chinese uh, legend. She would actually mold clay figurines and she would breathe into them and they would become alive. They'd become a living soul. And then she would dip them in the blood, which is called the blood of the goddess, and then they would be cleansed. Um, <clears throat> of course, you got... Uh, the story uh, of Adapa. Adapa was an ancient Samaritan uh, legend um, that Adapa, who was created, okay, he was created, and he was he was in a sacred garden, and he was told not to eat, drink, or clothe himself, or he'd lose immortality. Well, he refused drink and food, but <clears throat> he. He did dress himself, and because of that, all evil, sickness, and death occurred in the world. You also got the story of uh, Inkadu, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not Inkadu, Inky. Inky was uh, caught trespassing through the sacred garden, and he was forgiven by the gods for doing this, but he did suffer a punishment. He had to bear many daughters. His sixth daughter that he bore, her name was Ninti. The name Ninti means born of the rib. So yeah, this is where the influence of a woman coming from the rib of man um, came from. And in the story of Inky, she was made to close the wound to Inky's side. I mean, it's pretty verbatim there. Uh, you got Greek stories of, uh, of uh, Pandora, the first female in the Greek mythology, who ate a forbidden uh, a pomegranate. Oh, I'm sorry, not, 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 not Pandora. I'm sorry, uh, Perse uh, Persephone ate a uh, forbidden fruit and a pomegranate, which uh, all evil and sickness came in the world. Pandora was uh, told, first female creation in Greek mythology, was told not to open a box. Okay, She was tempted in opening the box, and when she did, it let out all the evil into the world. So, you know, from golem spells to, to all these other, these were ancient stories applied, but we do know by evidence that this never really happened. It could not have happened by two literal people. But the problem here, and I've said it before, a lot of people complain about evil. The problem here isn't evil, really. It's suffering. Let me give you a short little story that I find in my, uh, or that I put in my book, okay? You have little Timothy. Little Timothy, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon, okay? And little Timothy wanders off a little bit while his parents are working on the farm or, or, or whatnot. Little Timothy walks away away. Okay, and this is normal, he does this all the time, but there's a crack in the boulder, okay, a cliff almost. He falls in between this crack and falls about 30 feet, okay, enough to like break his ankles, okay, but unfortunately he fell through this crack, 
a boulder fell down and crushed his lower uh, uh, half, okay? Now, where he's at, nobody can hear him. Nobody can see him. Timothy, Little Timothy is in excruciating pain, okay? And he's still alive, but he's in excruciating pain. He stays like this for three days because it's not enough to kill him, but he's in excruciating pain. Then after three days, his body is craving water. He's dehydrated. And then to make matters worse, two hyenas come up, and they end up eating him alive. Little Timothy, eight years old. His parents could never find him. What is the point to this? Okay, you can blame magical fruit for the evil in the world, which we just went through all the problems with that, uh, 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 those problems with that theory. But again, it's not really the evil. It's the... It's the suffering. What is the point? I mean, you could say, well, little, little Timothy died and went to go be with the Lord, or he's now an angel in heaven. Whatever makes you feel good about the story, that's what people will say. Or maybe if you really kind of borderline, you know, disrespectful, you might say, well, this teaches the parents a lesson to keep a little, uh, to keep their eye on Timothy. However you want to explain it. But Fine, we'll, we'll concede to little Timothy's death being for some ultimate purpose, whatever. That's not the question. What, the question is, what is the purpose of little Timothy suffering for three days? Imagine this eight-year-old child. This happens all the time, so this is actually a true story. What's the purpose of him suffering for three days, feeling dehydration, starvation, the agony of being crushed by this boulder, being eaten alive by these hyenas, the fear that this eight-year-old child must have gone through. What was the point of that for three days? It can't teach little Timothy a lesson because he's dead now. It can't teach his parents a lesson. They never knew this happened. They never were able to find the body. So this is not consistent with a omnibenevolent God, okay? This isn't consistent with what you would expect in a God hypothesis. This is exactly what you would expect in a naturalistic uh, explanation. Um, and you can also use the uh, uh, an animal. You know, animals are in the Christian mythology don't have sin, but they also don't have eternal life. And you can watch these videos about uh, like a, a doe uh, by by a river, a creek, and getting drink. You know, which is required for uh, to to survive. This little doe is is getting a drink. These pack of wolves come up. I've watched videos of this. These pack of wolves come up and attack this doe and start tearing out its inward parts. And this doe is actually still alive, feeling all this pain. And they're still tearing out these inward parts. And several minutes go by before finally this doe falls over and is finally dead. Again, so you can do it with humans or animals. What was the purpose of this doe suffering excruciating pain? And then it don't even have the, uh, uh, the, the, the outlook to have eternal life. It just ends now. You know, what is the purpose of that suffering, okay? So you may you may be able through magical fruit to explain evil, which again can be disproven by just our basic knowledge of science, <clears throat> mainly biology. But again, you can't explain the suffering part. Um, and again, this is why believers have such a small world view because they only look at their their own perspective and their own little world and God, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a couple examples. And when you are in the position I'm in, it, it kind of ticks you off. And that is the word blessed. Can't stand it. Once you come to the truth, it, it, this word really irritates you. Okay. You know, so, <clears throat> you know, somebody will say, you know, you know, bless you, you know, um, you are blessed or even worse people that say I am blessed, you know, I am so blessed. See, I don't hear the word blessed. I hear the word, um, um, uh, can't think of the word right now, but it, 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 it's the superiority, the, the, the self-centeredness of, of that, you know, so you are blessed, uh, privilege. That's what I was looking for. So you are, I, I hear the word privilege. So, okay, so you are blessed, but 
Did you realize 8,000 children will die today to starvation, dehydration, and don't have any clothes to wear? So the same child that, let's say, is 4,000 miles from me right now, that is gasping for air, laying in a dirt or sand, skeleton is almost showing how skinny they are. And they're, because they have no drink. But you're blessed because God got you a job. The self-centeredness ideology that is Christianity is above all else. I mean, all religions have a narcissistic view, but Christianity takes a really to the next level. And, and every time I hear someone say that they are blessed, that's what I think of is, okay, so your God is getting you that job, helped you find your lost car keys, um, you know, Made your electric bill a little lower this month. Bless God, you know. <clears throat> but the same God at the same exact time is allowing 8,000 children to suffer and starve to death and, and die of dehydration today. Today. Just in the time you've been watching this video, probably, you know, around 100 kids or so have already died due to that reason. But you're blessed because you're in an AC house right now on your laptop watching this. this that's the, that's the, the, and that in itself is evil to me. Um, you know, but again, but not to get off topic, but this problem of evil is, a, is, is one of the biggest problems that non-believers have. And the, 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 the forbidden fruit from a magical tree explanation just doesn't, does not fulfill what we know. It really doesn't. And the problem is, too, is if you take this story of Adam and Eve as just symbolic, and it doesn't matter the literal event, it's just symbolic to teach you some sort of you know life lesson or whatever, then you have a real big problem because now why is there evil in the world to begin with? You know, so it's not really evil. It's the suffering that comes with it. You know, we live in a world full of deadly plants, deadly spiders, predators that kill at every turn, natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes that destroy entire cultures, diseases, parasites, uh, harmful radiation from the sun, and just plain cruelty everywhere you look. This world is it's habitable in, 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 in a sense that we can survive for now, but it is far from perfect. There's so much here that is just outright uh, cruel and evil. I mean, everywhere you look, which doesn't make sense in a God hypothesis, it only makes sense in a naturalistic explanation uh, to a T. I mean, you know, give you one short example David Ottenborough gave. And, uh, you know, he was in, uh, he, he said it was in East, East Africa. And there's this, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name, uh, Lily or, I forget, it's, a, it's an actual parasite. And the only way this parasite, which again, if you believe God created everything, <clears throat> the only way this parasite can survive is burrowing through eyeballs. It's the only way it can survive. So you would have to believe that God found it necessary to have this parasite created. And there are children in East Africa that, that die a slow, gruesome, most excruciating pain because of this parasite worm that will burrow through your eyeball i mean can you imagine that does that really fit you know a a omnibolivalent god or or an omniscient or omnipotent god even doesn't fit at all um you know there's evil and and suffering all around the world there always has been why would over 99 percent of all species that ever existed throughout the course of time be extinct that's cruel. Why is everything, you know, that is alive, every living organism that is deemed alive has to eat another living organism to survive? That's not really intelligent design. That is a, a, a wicked, evil way for a creation to come about. And I know that might hit hard, hit home there, but you've got to think critically for a minute. And I go over this all in my book, but I just wanted to have a short video series on the problem of evil. But I ask you to go back and look at that uh, above quote that we started this video with and think it through. Think logically over it. Really try to come up with an answer for it. 
And you'll find that it's a paradox. It just cannot be uh, explained one way or the other. All right, guys, going to do it for this video series. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know where to reach me. Until next time, thank you very much.